on Vinyl Community. Welcome to another video with the Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing all the records that I acquired within the month of September this year in 2022. But real quick, before we get into the haul, I figured I would share with you guys something pretty cool that I was able to do this month. Uh, if you follow me on social media, you've probably already seen this, but to those that don't, I had a chance to meet the original Catman himself, Peter Chris of Kiss, at the New Jersey Horror Con in Atlantic City this month. My dad and I had a chance to do a photo op with him, and he also signed my copy of the debut album, as you can see right there. And that was also the first time I got to meet a member of my favorite band, which was an absolutely amazing experience. Peter was very personable and humble. And right now, my new mission is to get the remaining three autographs on this copy of the debut. So fingers crossed that I can make that mission happen. So figured I would share it with you guys. Something pretty cool that I did recently. But in this haul, we have a lot to get through. We have some birthday VCLT since I did celebrate my 25th birthday this month. Some big star, kiss, audiophile upgrades, XTC, and much, much more. It is about to go deep. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest finds. All right, guys, so we're going to be kicking this haul off with a band that I have decided to dive headfirst into. Not, I wouldn't say entirely, but I did pick up a compilation by this band when I was in St. Louis with the youngest members of the VC. And after listening to that compilation, as well as uh, being subjected to them, uh, thanks to my co-workers at the Rock Shop, um, I decided to go after this band's first two records, uh, which are the ones that piqued the most interest to me, at least. And I am talking about Big Star. So this is their first album, number one record. And I also picked up their second album, Radio City. Um, if you have not heard of Big Star, you got to check them out. They are definitely the one nugget of the 70s that tends to go under the radar, but you will absolutely adore. Um, it is a shame that due to poor distribution that this band didn't get uh, quite the credit that they deserved back then for very much spearheading the whole power pop genre, which bands like Cheap Trick would kind of go on to delve into in the mid to late 70s. And these guys are, you know, well-renowned in a lot of the indie circles. Um, the songwriting duo of um, Chris Bell and Alex Chilton on this is just absolutely phenomenal. Very Beatles-esque, Lennon-McCartney type sounding. Um, it is just good stuff. Um, of course, uh, one of the significant tracks on the first album here is In the Street, which of course was the basis for the theme song to that 70s show. Um, Don't Lie to Me is a good one, When My Baby's Beside Me. Just an album full of great tracks. Uh, this reissue by Craft Recordings is phenomenal. Nice tip-on style glossy jacket. And it does recreate the Ardent Center label there, which is pretty nice. And then as for Radio City, um, Oh My Soul is on here. I'm in love with a girl. Um, September Girls is just one of those feel-good songs for me. It's just, it's ear candy, 100%. And it's funny, uh, when my coworker was playing um, this album uh, in the store, um, I immediately picked up on some cool Cheap Trick vibes with that track, September Girls. So I was just, that made me more eager to check them out for myself. Uh, Chris Bell does not appear on this record, so the band's down to a trio on this. And here is the center label there. So I know I have to hunt down the third album, as well as I think there was another record that was done a bit later on when they got back together. And then, of course, there's a handful of live releases and radio broadcasts and such. So I'll have to seek those out for myself, but until then... My big star adventure is off to the races. All right, guys, we have some fresh Kiss vinyl pressings to showcase for this month. These are both kind of coincidentally from the same sort of time frame, and they are all also Kiss Online exclusive pressings, starting off with an album that celebrated a 45th anniversary this year, and that is Love Gun. This came out back in 1977, of course. Um, I absolutely adore this record. I was go as far as to say that this is my favorite Kiss record, and it also has a bit of a soft spot in my heart because this was the first ever Kiss record that I owned as a kid. So I have such great, you know, fond memories listening to this album as a young kid, and also just, you know, 
it's a phenomenal record in general but this is a kiss online exclusive pressing because lately they've been doing these anniversary colored pressings um only available on their website and this right here is copy number four of this album that i have in my collection because simply one is not enough but if you're a kiss uh, vinyl collector you already know that um this does come of course with the prop love gun and here is the end when you assemble it you attach it on the end it says bang good stuff and of course the original blood printed inner sleeve here that the record came housed in and this pressing comes pressed on gold vinyl some people call this pea soup colored vinyl um i don't know if you look closely it kind of has a bit of a gold finish to it but it does look very sharp also a nice contrast compared to the silver vinyl press that we got of revenge uh last month so it's cool that they went with gold but to be honest with you i'm kind of surprised that they did another colored pressing of this and i say another because um in the past uh there was the walmart exclusive pressing of this album which came on splatter vinyl which is awesome i have that in my collection but when i saw this announced and given my feelings on it had to get it for myself and then somewhat within the same time frame uh, is also the newest installment of their Off the Soundboard series, which is their uh, line of official bootleg type releases. And this one, everyone has been going on about it. A lot of people are proclaiming this one to be so far the best one of the series. This is a new release. This is live in Des Moines from November 29th, 1977. This is live during the Alive 2 tour, which is more or less an extension of the Love Gun tour. And there was no recollection whatsoever of a soundboard recording circulating from this show. Yes, what was out there in the, in the bootleg circles was like a meh kind of audience recording, but it's surprises like this that goes to show that Anything could possibly exist deep in the bowels of the KISS archives. Kind of like how we're getting those Creatures of the Night soundboards, and yet audience recordings had only circulated for those. So, it's pretty crazy, but I digress. Um, this is an absolutely phenomenal set list here. And um, to be honest, this is, I would say, in terms of official releases, the only real opportunity so far that we get to hear KISS raw warts and all from this time frame given the fact that you know kiss alive one and two had some studio trickery going on with them this is a prime opportunity to hear them in their natural live state so i am excited to put this on the turntable each record comes housed in its own sleeve with a uh, respective track list and this is yet another kiss online uh, exclusive pressing and this comes pressed on purple vinyl which is absolutely vibrant and gorgeous looking so far i have all the other uh kiss online exclusive pressings that have come out for the off the soundboard releases relatively easy to collect and fun to collect and that means given how many months are left in the year because they stated that they wanted to put out i believe four off the soundboards this year we are due to get one more and we can speculate on what it is that they're going to give us but regardless i'm sure it's going to be great and i absolutely cannot wait to spin this soundboard recording from des moines 1977 on the turntable all right guys so here is a new album by a band that i have been loving for the past year or so i've mentioned this band so many times on my channel and it's safe to say that I am almost done completing their discography on vinyl. There's a few missing pieces that I need. But uh, this band is still putting out tons of interesting new music almost 25 years later upon them starting. And it's crazy to think that I say that. And this band has been around for as long as I've been around. And I am talking about Of Montreal. And this album is the very interestingly titled Free Wave Lucifer Fuck Fuck Fuck. That is the name of the album. Um, very much still in the sort of electronic vein that um, Kevin Barnes of Of Montreal has delved into. Of course, Kevin is the brainchild behind Of Montreal. And um, as of lately, it's almost like slight EDM type stylings. A little bit of pop, but a lot of interesting wordplay that Kevin has always done. 
uh, with any of his work, regardless of the genre, whether it's, you know, delving into psychedelic territory with the early stuff or some of the more electronic, danceable type rhythms uh, in their um, their more later stuff. Um, I do have to say I love the artwork that was uh, provided by David Barnes, who is Kevin Barnes's brother, who has done many other um, pieces of artwork above Montreal, um, very much like what... Uh, Derek Riggs is for Iron Maiden and Hypnosis for Pink Floyd and whatnot. Um, his imagery, as crazy and vibrant and psychedelic as it is, provides um, a nice visual counterpoint to Of Montreal's ideology. So this is absolutely phenomenal stuff. Nice gatefold jacket as well. Now, I went ahead and pre-ordered this off of um, the polyvinyl website. Of course, the band is on the polyvinyl label. And they do this thing called early bird editions, which are like pressings. It's like like a, a very limited variant that is offered when an album goes up for pre-order. They usually tend to sell out, become quite valuable later on. So I opted to get the early bird pressing of this record, limited to a thousand copies. And it comes pressed on this sort of yellow ripple colored vinyl as so you can kind of see where there's like some bits and blobs of yellow there which is quite interesting with some very nice label artwork very psychedelic indeed i will say you know given that you know of montreal's early stuff has very much been rooted in a sort of kind of quirky baroque pop psychedelic tinged you know their music has still always been in a sense psychedelic and you don't necessarily need that with flanger guitars and such you can always use it with synthesizers and whatnot but needless to say i'm babbling too much i gotta put this album on the turntable i need to sink my teeth into this new of montreal record all right, guys, so recently I celebrated a birthday, the Big 25. Quarter-life crisis is slowly creeping up on me, but I'm just kidding. Uh, some of the youngest members of the VC sent over some birthday VCLT, which I am so grateful for. These first two are from uh, my good friend Marikan over at Marikan's Music, and she had gifted me a copy of Green Day's 21st Century Breakdown. Um, the last time that I was at Sky Valley, he had got this in, and I actually had it in my hands, and I was going to pick it up, but I did not. I left with some other things. So perhaps it was perfect timing for her to gift me with this album that I honestly have a lot of fondness for when it came out brand new. I was really big into Green Day around the time of my sixth and seventh grade year of middle school. So that was when this album had come out and I saw the resulting tour. So, you know, as much as I haven't really revisited the album much recently, um, there is a little bit of a soft spot for this record. So thank you so much, Marikan. And of course, because she is a big Elton John fan, she did hook me up with some Elton John. And this is an album that I have been wanting to check out for a while. And that is his debut album, Empty Sky. So this is right before um, he did Your Song with the self-titled record. And that is my favorite Elton album. But I am excited to dig into this. And on this album, I believe uh, Skyline Pigeon is on this one. And that's just an absolutely beautiful song. Nice gatefold jacket there. And then this record comes from Emma over at 8 Vinyl Low. And honestly, if there was anyone that was going to gift me this record, it would be her because I sent her a small list of mainly blues-based records. And when it comes to the blues, I can trust her opinion because that is the genre that she is most passionate about. And this album is one that I've been wanting to check out for some time. Um, the recent MoFi One Step pressing caught my eye. But obviously, given, you know, what entails with there, we're not going to discuss it now. Um, there was also this other pressing that existed, which Emma was so gracious enough to gift me. And I am talking about... Muddy Waters Folk Singer, and this right here is the Analog Productions Pressing, which is absolutely phenomenal. Nice, high-quality tip-on jacket. Good stuff here, and just for the sake of showcasing everything, because let's face it, it is Analog Productions, and it is amazing quality. Pressed on nice heavyweight vinyl, mastered by Bernie Grunman from Analog Sources, not DSD like MoFi, but that's not a bad thing. But still, you know, I do have to say Analog Productions does get the extra bit of kick 
when it comes to their transparency and the quality of their product. And according to Emma, she has this pricing as well. It was as if Muddy was playing in her music room, and I cannot wait to experience the same for myself with my setup in my room. So thank you so much, Emma. Okay, so for the past couple of weeks, I have been listening to this particular band nonstop, just diving into their catalog, checking out notable hits and singles and album tracks and such. Um, this is a band that I didn't have any records of, with the exception of a few. I'll explain what this means in a bit. Uh, but upon doing some record trades uh, recently, I decided to pick up a sort of three-album primer to just completely engulf myself into this band's catalog and this is a band that emerged from england in the late 70s initially kind of new wave-ish and punkish and then once the 80s kind of came in they morphed into a more sort of neo psychedelia progressive pop type outfit um had a couple of hits in their time um, didn't quite reach the monstrous heights of some of their contemporaries, uh, but they always remain to have a cult following. And uh, this band is uh, very much talked about by various music colleagues of mine, and they always talk, say great things about them. And it's about time that my ears just clicked with them. And the band that I am talking about is XTC. So the three albums that I picked up were Black Sea, English Settlement, and Skylarking. So as for the reasonings behind these albums, the main reason why I opted to check out Black Sea is of course because it features one of my favorite XTC songs and that is Generals and Majors. Um, absolutely love the, um, the music video. Uh, Richard Branson makes a cameo appearance in it and it's just a very ear-catching song. Beautifully crafted. I mean, between Andy Partridge and Colin Moulding, like those two as writers are just sensational at what they do. And I'm quite excited to dig into the rest of this record. And just for the sake of showcasing everything, here is the center label. And then this is an album that um, my coworker John had said that I would really, really like. And it's a double album as well, English Settlement. This one, of course, features uh, Senses Working Overtime. And I actually did get a chance to listen to this album front to back. Um, I just streamed it from Apple Music at the record store that I work at just to kind of get a general gist of it. And I really enjoyed what I heard upon just kind of listening to it as I was working. So I'm quite excited to dig into this. Two printed dinners with lyrics and artwork. And here is the vinyl for that. And then in most cases, a lot of people will point to Skylarking as being the sort of best um, XTC album. And of course, the big notable track on this is Dear God, which they kind of got some flack for due to some of the nature of the lyrical content regarding religion and stuff. But it is a great, great song indeed. This one does come with a insert here. There's the band right there. After their first several albums, they did go drummerless, so it just consisted of Dave, Andy, and Colin. And then the Prince of Dinnersleeve here features various um, XTC or XTC-related releases. And here is the center label for that. Now, in terms of what I had previously of this band, I already have the two Dukes of Stratosphere albums. So, of course, XTC, in the 80s, they did a side project called the Dukes of Stratosphere, where they kind of morphed themselves to be this sort of long-lost psychedelic band from the 60s, and they just basically throw in every 60s cliche into a melting pot, and it literally does sound like long-lost recordings from you know, the late 60s British psychedelic era. And I absolutely love those records. And I always felt that because I enjoy those releases so much that I should really give regular XTC stuff a shot. So that time has finally come. And who knows what other albums of theirs I will be sharing in future videos. Maybe I'll do XTC content on the channel. We shall see. But needless to say, I am so excited to dive into XTC's catalog. Okay, guys, so here is the fun and exciting part of this month's vinyl haul, and that is a segment that I'm going to call Audiophile Upgrades. So these are albums that I have had already in my collection, but recently I have encountered some quite notable audiophile tier reissues that 
to me felt justifiable to upgrade what I previously had, which I will discuss what I had previously, and then obviously showcase what I got my hands on. So starting off with, I think, a vinyl collection essential, and just an overall solid record, is Super Tramp's Crime of the Century. This album is phenomenal. School, Bloody Well Right, Hide in Your Shell, Asylum, Dreamer, the title track, phenomenal stuff. What I had previously in my collection was a basic A&M universal reissue that was done around, I want to say 2016, 2017. But this right here is exciting because I don't have any pressings by this particular reissue label. This is the Speaker's Corner reissue that came out around 1999. Um, for a while, it was relatively easy to come by, and now copies have become quite scarce, and I just happened to stumble across one fairly recently. Um, the only downside, um, and I don't know if this is like a real pressing defect, you probably won't be able to see it on camera. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it. There's some visible marks around the outer edge of side one. Um, by the looks of it, it looks like it'll probably play through maybe some slight surface noise. But from what I've read of this pressing, sourced from Analog Masters, um, and I'm sure, and everyone, you know, goes on about how great this pressing sounds, and I'm very excited to hear it. Um, the only other audiophile press that I've heard of this particular album was the original Mobile Fidelity uh, pressing that was done in the 70s, and I had a chance to listen to that on a really nice high-end system when I did my. Um, record store road trip around New Jersey if you want to peel back and check that out. So I'm super stoked to check this out for myself. Going in a more grunge kind of vein with the Nirvana self-titled compilation. Um, what I had previously was just the basic single LP version, which is just absolutely fine. But this right here is the 2LP 45 RPM edition. So if anything, it just sounds just a smidge better than the uh, the standard 1LP. But also you get some augmented artwork here. So we have a gatefold, which features some photos, as well as an insert with liner notes and photos. This is featured in the single LP. And then just for the sake of showcasing everything, mastered by Chris Bellman, nice heavyweight vinyl. Um, this one is a EU um, pressing, which was pressed at Optimal, as opposed to, I think, the US version that was done at Quality Record Pressings, if memory serves me correct. Uh, but definitely excited to um, dig into this 2LP version of the self-titled Nirvana compilation. And next up is a rather, rather big one. This is also a rather new release. Um, I have not gone through the entire process of hunting all of these down as of right now as they've been coming out, simply because I do like this band a lot and they have a lot of great songs that I enjoy, but I don't know if it's worth going down this entire route to upgrade my entire studio collection of this band, but this album of theirs is my favorite. And when I saw that I was able to get my hands on it, I figured I might as well. I am talking about Eagles on the Border. Of course, this is the Mobile Fidelity one-step pressing. Yes, it's digital, DSD, blah, 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 blah. But believe me, this sounds absolutely phenomenal. What I had previously was just the standard reissue that was done some time ago, which did sound very good to my ears, but... QLP 45 RPM presented very nicely. It sounds absolutely tremendous. The acoustic guitars are very silky sounding. Um, the harmonies just are so upfront, especially like on the final track, Best of My Love. It just fills up the room entirely. So if you are an Eagles fan and you're an audiophile as well, you got to hunt these down. Um, like I've said, I have had opportunities to buy the first album and Desperado, but I don't know, maybe I'll be bitten with a bug and I'll end up snagging all these i don't know we'll see but very happy to have this and then somewhat keeping it in the sort of classic rock you know type thing this album is one that's in every collection am i a big fan of this band not necessarily do i think this album is a bit overrated and hyped up in places sure do i have a copy of it yes because in all honesty i mean it's it's, it's an enjoyable record 
Fleetwood Mac Rumors. This right here is the 2LP 45 RPM press that was mastered by Kevin Gray and Steve Hoffman. Uh, this was gone for a very long time, and there was a repressing that was done kind of recently. And I decided, you know what, just for, you know, sound quality purposes and the fact that, like I said, this is an album that just is an, ev is an everyone's collection, I figured I would check it out for myself. Um, what I had previously was just a standard reissue that was pressed over at Palast that was quite reputable. That was like the next best option down below this. But, um, but what's cool about this 2LP version is the little bit of spot varnishing that's on the front cover. So it's like a matte cover with that bit of glossy design. And we have a nice gatefold jacket there with the insert. And then, of course, we have all the lyrics here with band photos and whatnot. All good stuff. On that classic reprise palm tree label. And... Speaking of Fleetwood Mac, this isn't quite part of the audiophile upgrade section, but it's something worth um, showcasing and checking out. Um, I have not had a chance to really dive into the pre-Stevie Nicks, Lindsey Buckingham, Fleetwood Mac. And I've always had this gut feeling that I would really enjoy what I would hear of the pre, you know, Nicks, Buckingham, Fleetwood Mac. So I picked up this copy of English Rose. And this, of course, features Peter Green on vocals and guitar, John McVie and Mick Fleetwood are on this as well. Um, in terms of notable tracks, um, there is quite a good amount of them. Uh, Black, uh, Black Magic Woman's on here, Albatross, Stop Messing Around, Jigsaw Puzzle Blues is Good Fun, is featured in the uh, Rock and Roll High School soundtrack, which is where I knew it from. And this is an unofficial pressing which comes pressed on orange vinyl. So it was kind of interesting to find this piece out in the wild, but I figured to uh, dig into some early Fleetwood Mac, this would be a relatively decent place to start. Okay, so in this final segment of the monthly vinyl haul, this is basically a little bit of everything, just various drips and drabs of stuff that I want to showcase before the month wraps up that I got my hands on. This next one up is actually a uh, birthday gift that I got from my parents, and I know for a fact my dad chose this record to gift me because this album is kind of a small part of my childhood in the sense that I remember when I was a kid, my dad had a cassette copy of this album, and this album is one that he loves very, very much. I don't have many recollections actually listening to it, but I remember seeing it a lot. Uh, but obviously I've heard such great things about this particular band and this record, and this is kind of my first sort of foray into the world of jazz fusion. The band that I am talking about is Return to Forever. The album is called Romantic Warrior. Of course, on this album, you have uh, Chick Corea, Stanley Clark, Lenny White, and Al DiMiola. Fantastic stuff, and I am very excited to dig into this album, just for the sake of showcasing everything. Nice little insert with the band logo, along with some credits and lyrics. And of course, comes on that red Columbia label as well. This is the music on vinyl pressing. So very excited to give this album a shot and perhaps dig a little deeper beyond just this into the world of jazz fusion. I am so stoked that I rounded off my Uncle Acid in the Deadbeats collection. I showcased one of the records in my last monthly haul that I was stoked to get. And now I basically got everything else that has been released by them in terms of full-length albums, EPs, and such. Um, their stuff is relatively hard to come by. Um, basically, once pressings kind of dry up, they tend to drive up in value. But I take it that there was a very silent repressing done, and I managed to kind of fill in the gaps right now. So, starting off with... Uncle Lassen and the Deadbeats Volume 1. This is an EP that they did before they did their full-length um, album Bloodlust, which is phenomenal. Um, this was done back around 2010, so it does go back some time ago. Uh, but this is kind of more in the sort of psych rock kind of vein. Um, not so much doomy as some of their later stuff. Uh, so it is quite primitive, but nonetheless very very cool and in here we have a cool insert with some cool kind of spooky psychedelic photos of the band members along with some handwritten lyrics here and just like all of the sort of recent repressings that have been done on the rise above records label that they're a part of this pressing kind of comes on a sort of dark olive green colored vinyl 
kind of the same as my pressing of uh, Mind Control that I got last month. And then we get into full length territory with the Night Creeper. And like I've mentioned before, Uncle Lasset tends to do a lot of conceptual type albums that have a sort of plot around it. And with the Night Creeper, this kind of has a narrative of a sort of Jack the Ripper type serial killer. Um, there's all kinds of thriller type, you know, aesthetics in Uncle Lasset's work. So this is all good stuff. A little cheap trick connection there, just for the sake of pointing it out. And same as the volume one EP. Dark olive green vinyl. And this is a double album as well. And I'm very excited to dig into this conceptual piece because I really loved Mind Control when I listened to it uh, from last month. So very excited to have this. Very excited to have both of them. Because like I said, now my Uncle Lassa collection is pretty much complete. And here is a record that my coworker John actually gave me. Uh, this particular album was just recently reissued. Uh, but upon him opening up his copy... Uh, there was a defect on the vinyl, and upon him seeing that, um, basically he wanted to get another copy, so instead he just said, here you go. So I was like, thanks, John. And that record is Sparks, Angst in My Pants. This is one that I've been really itching to get my hands on as of lately, just digging into the whole world of Sparks. Uh, this one is also produced by Mac, um, kind of has a slight queenish sound to it, just given the fact that Mac produced it, recorded in Munich and whatnot. Uh, but this is the first time that um, Sparks started to utilize their sort of backup band on this record. It's very much a more sort of group effort type of album based off of the documentary that I had watched where they kind of touched on this album. But of course, you know, classic tracks on here. The title track is good fun. I predict that was the big single off of it. Sherlock Holmes is good fun. Um, just overall very clever sort of, I don't know, art pop type stuff. That's the best way I can possibly describe it. Nice printed inner sleeve here. And here is the defect that I am referring to. So the label is mispressed, uh, but luckily it does not leach onto the grooves of the actual record. I mean, yes, obviously it's in the dead wax, but as long as I get the needle up upon the last track being done, then my needle should be in relatively good shape. But overall, as you can see, it's basically almost like a marbled kind of translucent red vinyl. So we have a little bit of black mixed in with the red, uh, which obviously fits the color aesthetic of the album cover, which is quite fitting. And last but not least, uh, this record is basically going to be a little hint of what is to come in a future video next month on my channel. And it pertains to this band that I'm going to showcase. And that is The Doors. Love Hides, live in Pittsburgh, May 2nd, 1970. Um, this was actually recorded um, for their absolutely live album. And um, Rhino, Bright Midnight Records, uh, basically had released this officially, um, as with the other shows that were recorded around the same time frame. Uh, but somehow this is sort of leaked into some legal bootleg territory. So basically this is a, you know, official bootleg of an official release. Kind of a weird umbrella for this to uh, reside within, but um, this is such a solid performance and the recording quality is of course phenomenal. It's professional grade. And with all of these various sort of dodgy doors, um, live, uh, um, like official bootleg releases, this is one that I can actually buy with confidence because it is the full length show of what was released officially. Um, they just never did a vinyl press of it officially. So until that is bound to happen, I have this uh, this sort of legal boot like to pass me by. But like I said, this is a little indicator of what is to come in a future video. So there you guys go. That is my vinyl haul of all the records that I acquired within the month of September this year in 2022. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the records spinning.